Hello by Royd Young Artists. In the past, an electric violin or cello was associated with rock music, but today it can be used and is being used to play many different American and world styles. It can be combined with an acoustic orchestra or an acoustic ensemble, or be played as a standalone with a band or on your own. The techniques that we use on an electric are very similar to what we apply to an acoustic instrument, including what I would call eclectic styles techniques, meaning techniques that we use that would be appropriate for American and world styles versus the classical music of Western Europe. So that legato vibrato um, uh, ornament, shall I say, for Western classical is not really going to be the main staple, the foundation for our technique when we're playing on an electric. When you play on an electric, you can use a lighter touch in both hands. That lighter touch will actually help you enormously when you're playing the music of Western Europe, classical music of Western Europe. And I want to point out that I phrase it that way because there's a classic music of every region, including of America. That lighter touch will enable you to move much more freely on the instrument and also protect you from injury. But in terms of equipment, what do you need that's different than your acoustic? It's not really that different. I mean, you will need a tuning fork or a t an electric tuner. You, you will need um, your rosin. I do suggest, though, that you have a dedicated bow because <laughs> many of us, if we switch our bows back and forth between cases, could pick up a case in a hurry and open it at a, a jam session or a gig and find that there's no bow in there. So make sure that you have a bow that is the bow you use with your electric. You'll also need cords to plug in and I always suggest that you carry one extra one just in case something goes wrong with one of your of your cables, one of your cords. And if you are going to use an electric violin that requires a battery, make sure you have a couple of extra batteries on hand with you. So you always want to carry extras with you, and it would be great if you had a dedicated travel bag where you keep all of the equipment you need associated with your electric in that bag, and you can just grab a hold of it and be on the run with it, come home, put it down. It's all kept together for you. In terms of the care of your instrument, a similarity would be that we never want to place our acoustic or our electric face down on the bridge. All the more important for an electric because that can, depending on how it's set up, it can actually damage the electronics, but we don't want to do that with the acoustic either. The other thing you have to be careful about, obviously, is that you know, we don't want to drop any of our instruments, but we don't want any kind of rough handling to throw off the electronics in the instrument. And I think just as with the acoustic, it's really important to have a dedicated place for your instrument. When you're at home, that instrument is always put down in the same place where it's safe, um, whether it's your acoustic or your electric and it becomes a habit that you take with you on the road. And you would be surprised, I mean, I, I have seen colleagues, I'm not going to name any names, but I've seen colleagues in group situations put, put their instrument down on a chair and then, you know, we all scream when somebody's about to sit down on, on that instrument because they didn't notice, or where someone knocks into it or knocks a case over. Uh, away from animals, away from, <laughs> you know, you really want to find that safe haven. And if, if you remain plugged in, I, I like to make a habit of actually unplugging before I put it down. But if you're plugged in, make sure you always run the wires a certain way so that no one, you included in case the phone rings or the doorbell rings, no one's going to trip over that wire, yank the instrument, and have it fall. When, when you remove a plug, 
you know, be gentle. I mean, support the instrument and pull, hold as close in to pull that plug out um, rather than pulling from the cord so that your cord lasts longer and um, the circuitry is, is protected. In this tutorial, we're going to be talking about how to amplify your electric, control the tone, and use special effects. I'll be using my NS Design NXT Violin, a Zoom special effects box, and the LR Bags preamp. When you're selecting an amp to use, and for those of you who are new at this, you will not be able to hear your electric unless you are plugged into an amplifier. Every single amp will actually provide you with a different sound. So I highly recommend that you take your instrument once you've made your instrument choice and bring it to your local music store and do some you know, research online. We're very fortunate to have that available and read other people's reviews, what they think. Most amps are actually designed for bass, guitar, and keyboards. They're not designed for us bowed string players. This makes it a little bit trickier for us in terms of the control of our overall tone, our overall EQ. EQ meaning equalization. The lows, the mid-range, the presence, and the treble. And our preamp will give you that kind of very detailed control so that you could really tailor the sound that you want.